สวัสดีเจ้า This is how we say hello in Northern Thai, and it's where we are right now in Chiang Mai. My name is Jack Brown. I am British-born, but I've been living in Thailand for the last eight years, and I am here to discover local tourism, local communities in and around Chiang Mai, and we're going to go on an awesome trip. I moved to Thailand after coming here as a tourist uh, 14 times, and I decided to move here because of that special feeling that you get when you go somewhere, and it just feels absolutely fantastic. You feel very warm in the heart, and feel like this is home. A lot of people ask, why do people love Chiang Mai? You've got the city part of it, and even the city part, I've got this, this vibe, there's a lot of cafes, it's got this whole cafe culture going on. And aside from that, you've got all of the mountainous regions around and outside of Chiang Mai. So it's a perfect place just to come up. It just becomes a really nice place to spend time. Definitely a place worth visiting. <laughs> Monsoon tea. Here we are. Twenty years ago, when I came here, I came here to look for teapots, and I didn't know Thailand had tea. I never heard about it. That was I said, this is not tea. This is spinach or something. You know, that's what so I it said. It smells like fermented spinach or something. Yeah, yeah. So I was sure it was not tea. So what's this called? This is called Miang. It was a tea plant. But it was growing completely different from all the tea plants I've seen in Japan, China, India, and so right. on. It was growing inside the forest together with all okay. the other things, you know. So it was like really kind of mm. amazing, very different. Actually, Thailand is part of the origins of tea. Mm. The, the tea comes from not only Thailand, but the mountains between Assam in India, uh, Yunnan, China, uh, Vietnam, Laos, and Northern Thailand. Yeah. And this was the first way how people uh, used the tea, long before people started to drink tea. Oh, wow, I, I didn't so, even realize. <laughs> yeah, so tea comes from here, and this is the first way of producing tea. It goes really well with the nuts. Yeah. Mm. I like it. Tea can actually grow together with all the rest of biodiversity and so on. So, 10 years ago I started Monsoon Tea. And we want to specialize in tea from Thailand, but only tea that grows together with forest or biodiversity and so right. on. In this way the farmers can start to earn money again mm -hmm. and without cutting down the forest that grows around the tea plant. So that is our idea. That's fantastic. To be honest, this is the first time where I've actually gone all out to visit many different communities, engage and interact with the local people, learn about their way of life um, and how sustainable tourism affects them, even processing food, how they're able to source food, source ingredients for their local community, and just learn about what they do um, with the produce that they get. Do they sell it? Do they eat it themselves? How do they make a living from it? So I must admit, this trip for me, it was very informative. Um, it was a great experience. It's something I would definitely love to do again. So right now I'm here at the Black Kitch, which is Chef Black, that's his name his restaurant here in Chiang Mai, which is holistic, local, artisanal cuisine. Not only uh, Thai cuisine, but yeah. uh, like uh, local wisdom from the uh, many parts of Thailand and uh, also from the Western, Japanese, mm. something like that. That's what we call holistic. Yeah. Yeah, and the artisanal is like a, I mean, like a craft things mm. that uh, we do, like food waste management in, in the kitchen or the condiment that we made, mm. like the soy sauce, fish sauce, cream plate that we, we made it our that. Fantastic. Some things I've never tried before, such as buffalo and um, sweet white shrimp from Surat Tani. I've never had that type of shrimp before, so very excited about it. There's a whole list of different ingredients. Let's just see how tasty this is going to be.
as we were coming in the entrance just now from into Gaomai Lana Hotel, I noticed these sort of old buildings and like sort of small warehouses or whatever. It sort of yeah. made me intrigued and curious to know what did this place, or what was this place before it became a hotel? Yeah, it's pretty unique, right? So this place used to be a tobacco processing estate. It started in 1955. Basically, a royal family from the north of Thailand, they just, they just started this project. My father actually took, took it over in about 20, 30 years later. Right. About five years mm. at that time. And I think the business did not do well. The, the farmers, like they started to change to um, from growing tobaccos to yeah. other fruits, yeah. and some of them even stopped like doing agriculture like mm. at all. So we had to stop that business. So and it was your father that conceptualized the idea to, to change it into a hotel. Yes. I mean, it feels like it. Just coming in here, you suddenly feel relaxed. Yeah. Peaceful, yeah. calm. Yeah. A lot of trees, a lot of green space. Yeah. We're trying to prove that um, we can create um, a business model that allows nature and people and you know community to be able to survive, mm. coexist together. And yeah. are you doing much work with the local communities? Yes. 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 Tea la ma thung don ni le wa lai ka pi an. Ah, ni ta pen mun ti tham kan no kong kum lao fan ka. Pen pen mun pen ti ti lieng kai organic. มีทั้งไก่ไข่ไก่เนื้ออินทรีย์ครับมันก็จะมีของชาวบ้านเนาะแต่ละที่อันนี้แค่เป็นจุดหนึ่งในในตำบลก็มีอีกหลายจุดครับว่าไงครับน้องไก่ We're going to collect some eggs Oh look at this ผมไม่กล้า This is what this is like It feels like it's almost been boiled So within the forest, actually, there's some ways that the communities try and protect these trees, and one of them is here. So by putting this wrap around it, it's actually something which kind of tied into something a bit more auspicious or, or religious. It's going to make them actually not want to cut the tree down because they might think that it, it's, it's valued higher than just being a tree. It sort of almost has some sort of religious entity. So it's a way of protecting it by using culture and beliefs. ก็จอกน้ำบันดาลใต้ดินขึ้นอยู่ที่บ้านนะเก็บหกหกเจ็ดแปดบาทสุดท้ายเมษาพฤษภาติดลบค่าไฟสูงเก็บสาบ้านไปมันไม่พอทีนี้รักษาปลาขึ้นมาก็เอาน้ำไปนี่ไปใช้ลดแค่เหลือหน่วยละสองบาทยำเจ็ดแปดบาท What our guides telling us here is that they managed to install this water system I think 30 or 40 years ago to actually bring in fresh water down from the mountains and it's almost sort of breathe fresh life into the forest and that's why over the past 30 years there's so much more trees and vegetation here. This water will go all the way down into the community so the houses, people living there actually use this fresh water from the mountains for all things, household, cooking, eating, cleaning, drinking. Looks crystal clear, looks very clean. Kind of makes me feel a bit thirsty actually. <laughs> We're uh, making I'm not really sure what that is, but um, I think it's some sort of omelette, right? This is what you call extremely fresh egg. This is just less than an hour old. There you go, got some fresh salt. <laughs> Burnt all the hair off of my hands. Oh, it's delicious. Alloy. Okay. Mm. Very nice. Kunan from Meta was also inspirational. It took me through a journey into the forest, the first time I've ever been. It was just an experience where you feel totally immersed in everyday way of life for people living in these communities. So it was just nice for me, not just to listen to it, but to actually go and do it myself. Really happy with it.
ับผมมาลานี้ผมจะเป็นลูกค้ามาช่วยสนับสนุนด้วยกันซื้อวัตถุเด็ดหรือซื้อของมาที่นี่ผูกเองกินเองทํากินเองก็จะได้รู้ว่ามันมาจากไหนใช่ไหมรู้ที่มาที่ไปใช่ไหมคะได้ซื้อข้าวจากชุมชนไหนคุณกินข้าวยำที่ร้านเราเอ้าคุณได้สนับสนุนคนที่พัทลุงกินตามฤดูกาลหมายถึงว่าถ้าคุณรู้จักซีซันรู้จักเวลาของมันคุณจะไม่ขี้โกงไปใช้สารเคมีจากจานอาหารเล็กๆของเราจากปากจากลิ้นของเราคุณตอบได้เลยว่าคุณสนับสนุนใครบ้างอาหารในระบบแมปไหนที่คุณยังอยากจะช่วยสปอร์ตภาษาอังกฤษน่าจะเรียกว่าเป็นเป็น trickle down economics นะครับ it's not gonna destroy uh, the nature or it's not be um, in the form of industrial farms or fertilizers and pesticides things like this so it's natural product organic product also supporting local communities farmers from all over the country What I loved about this trip most is the passion of the people that I met. It seems so many people really care, and they're really aspiring to do things that are more sustainable, not just for their own local community, but for the country as a whole. Make people understand where humans have gone wrong over the last few decades, where we're choosing to buy our food from now, what we're putting into our bodies. Things like this, which really open your eyes and open your heart, and you think. And engage of acts of responsible tourism, where we can actually learn, not just expose ourselves for a new experience, but we can learn about the ways of life that people are doing in these communities and how we can bring that into our life and add value into our lives. So I think this type of tourism, responsible tourism, sustainable tourism, is something that people are beginning to open their eyes up to a lot more. And Thailand is a great choice if you're interested. You can do so much more than that. And why Thailand is. So amazing is because it never does cease to amaze you. Just when you think you know everything, you've seen it all, you've been to Thailand, you've tried it, you've tested it, you've done it. There's still so much more that you can learn, so much more that you can see, and that is exactly what I've done here in Chiang Mai. So for me, this experience has definitely been amazing, Chiang Mai. Amazing, Chiang Mai. Amazing, Thailand.